नमस्कार गुड इवनिंग एंड वेलकम टू दिस एट्थ एपिसोड ऑफ एनकाउंटर विथ आलोक स्पॉन्सर्ड बाय जोजो डीएमसी विच इज अ डेस्टिनेशन मैनेजमेंट बेस्ड कंपनी इन लंडन एंड स्कॉटलैंड इट डज लॉट ऑफ एफ आई टी टूर्स इट डज लॉट ऑफ ग्रुप टूर्स टूडे द पर्सनैलिटी वॉट वी आर हैविंग ऑन आर शो टूडे इज अ पैशन एट डेडिकेटेड हार्ड वर्किंग इंथुजियास्टिक बीबीसी शेफ क्वार्टर फाइनलिस्ट worked in many michelin star restaurants four rodez rosett restaurants and only the indian chef to won a gold medal in scott hall we will be connecting now to chef rohan in clarkston glasgow so let's try to connect chef rohan yes i think he is there yeah Hello good evening chef Hi good evening chef how are you can you hear me Yes i can hear you Very good very good to see you after a long time chef how have you been Uh i'm good alok uh, nice to see you as well uh i'm okay. i'm very good back to work now since last back 3 weeks work. so oh, it's yeah, getting yeah, yeah. you know what's happening around the world is really sad and but we are trying to overcome it so no worries here yeah. So yes and how is family doing is okay Yes everybody is doing good thank you very much good So uh, chef I wanted to tell you what this show is all about this uh, I tell in my each and every episode this platform has been made to entertain people and acquire knowledge so we get like I I am doing a batches of or patches you can call of sections like just now hospitality section is going on so uh the section number 1 will be based on your career and achievements number 2 will be based on travel because as you know our travel partner is zozo dmc and the third section will be your uh, rapid fire co- rounds and with your closing statement what you want to tell the viewers so you good to go chef yes i'm ready very good so the first encounter question to chef rohan will be this please tell me your journey from Rohan Vadke to Chef Rohan. Over to you, Chef. Uh, obviously, uh, I I um, I come from a very middle class background, a city called Pune in India. Uh, none of the family member is into the this field, hospitality. So it's very new to our family. Uh, so I was the only one who wanted to become a chef. The only thing I know when I entered to the hospitality college in Pune is I can do it, but I don't know what is the procedure, what is the process behind it, and what is the hard work and the patience required when I entered. Uh, so I took the admission in uh, Bharti Vidyapeet Hotel Management in Pune. So it was a four years degree program. So I worked, uh, I studied there for t- four years between 1998 and 2002. So in that time, I was uh, working with Taj Gateway of India. I uh, worked there for eight months for my industrial training, and that time I realized. uh this is the one i wanted to do it you know this is the field i wanted to keep on going with you know uh and then after passing out from the college uh, i got selected uh, with grand hyatt mumbai which is uh, one of the biggest property uh, in mumbai and they are just launching their hotels in india so it was a pre opening hotel and everything was new we had uh, the executive chef came from austria and then uh, in that journey i learned a lot from there and then after that my journey started and then working there for two and a half years uh, i got opportunity to come to glasgow in 2006 uh, so there are four chefs from hilton worldwide they came to mumbai uh, for an interview so i just went for an interview and i got selected and then t- after 16 years i'm here with you <laughs> very good chef very good 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 to know yeah lot of struggle chef lot of struggle good but uh, see success is count the sweetest for those who never succeed when i was a child i used to hear these phrases and strong no really really a good mean to me yeah okay chef so uh, while doing your background research i was doing when i was doing my research data and lessons so i came across that you cooked in 10 downing street like pm's house it's 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 a very big thing in india in uk wherever in entire world So I wanted to know uh, you cook for uh, Arun Jaitley am I right yeah That's right yes Yeah so 
what was your feeling at that time? Did you means I wanted to know and each and everyone want to know what is there in 10 Downing Street? Why it's so hype? I know it's PM's house, but we wanted to know, did you meet the PM? Did you see him? How closely you see him? So if you could focus on that bit, please. Uh, obviously, we got invited uh, to the 10 Downing Street because at that time I was working for Cinnamon Club, a Cinnamon Club, which is a uh, restaurant group uh, uh, hold by uh, Vivek Singh. Vivek Singh is a very popular chef in London. Uh, so two of my chefs, so I was working as a sous chef there with Cinnamon Club and another two chefs. We went there 10 Downing Street. So before you actually go to the 10 Downing Street, they check your credit history, everything. So literally from in the morning, we left five o'clock in the morning and six o'clock we are at 10 Downing Street. It literally took two minutes to go inside the security because obviously they know everything about you, where you come from, what you do, everything because your history and credit history is already done. Uh, so we cooked the breakfast for uh, 80 people in there. So that time all the finance minister from India and the finance minister was George Osborne that time in uh, David Cameron's government. Uh, so they had a meeting in there. Uh, so we went there uh, at six o'clock sharp and we are supposed to serve the breakfast at half nine after the meeting, but that was the plan. So we went inside, we said, right. We, uh, so there is somebody called a house manager, the, ma the man who in charge for the 10 Downing Street. So he had, he given us a tour about 10 Downing Street, how many bedrooms in there, how many meeting rooms. So they got uh, three private meeting rooms. And then one is very small one, which is, uh, hold a private meeting, for example, between six and 10 people. So we went in there and there was a little bit of funny incident there, uh, which is, I would like to share. We went inside and then we realized the chef before us who was came by one day before he changed all the gas codes. So the gas was not working in the morning. And then we were waiting to get hold of that chef, but we couldn't manage to get hold of that chef. So we we're waiting till eight o'clock. So we are inside at six o'clock, but we were waiting till eight o'clock to organize the gas in the 10 Downing Street. But obviously a little bit of panic there because end of the day, they, they are very VVIPs people. You know, you wanted to make sure the timings get matched on everything. Uh, but somehow we managed to get our breakfast sorted uh, before half nine. Uh, so obviously the breakfast was very simple. Uh, we do the South Indian breakfast, plus some Maharashtrian dishes, like for example, Kanda Pohe. We made idli, sambar, chutney, everything on the house in there. Uh, we made some dosas there, uttapas there, and some English breakfast also. There's post eggs and the scrambled eggs, that kind of stuff there. Uh, so we served that everything to them. And the house manager came over and they said, uh, obviously, Mr. Arun Jetli and uh, George Osborne wanted to speak to you. So me and my two of my chefs went to the main dining room. And we couldn't believe, we, we shook the hand with all the, one of the best politicians, which we have seen on the telly, on that door. Uh, and it was an absolutely great pleasure uh, to meet Arun Jetli and the George Osborne and a team. Definitely. It, it was a great experience, I would say. It was a bit of panic at that time. So, so, uh, so did you finally find the chef and did it or did somebody come in that and did it? So how, how did uh, that happen? So obviously they finally get a hold of the guy who changed the code for the gas wow. and then it, they done it. You know, at that time, if I was there, I would have panicked because I do a lot of catering. And, you know, something, two hours, it's quite a lot because... It's we, quite we, a long time. Yeah, we lost already two hours in there, you know. So, we, we, are, we are not panicking. We are, we are not absolutely confident. We know we can achieve it. If we can get 8 o'clock start also, we can bang on. You know, we are on the time. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, because we take, for VVIP's client, we take time in advance so yeah exactly you know, yes we like always prep ourselves in advance you know no, but it, it, it would have been a very joyful moment when you shook hand with the top top end politicians and at Cameron's time so uh, I know people don't like David Cameron some like some doesn't like but I always like his ethics and means it's my personal opinion here so let's let's go that way so the third question what comes is uh, to you is chef you, you went, I mean, see from hospitality, you went into education line. You were a lecturer at Fourth Valley College in Sterling. So how did, how did you end up the, over there? What uh, made you do that? Um, I was working in London before that. And then I was planning to move back to Scotland. Uh, and then that time, because of the family commitments, I wanted to set, not settle, but I wanted to spend at least two years uh, for my family in Sterling. 
so i thought uh, there will be a good career option to have a try and then see what exactly education needs to offer to the local people and how i can contribute my knowledge to the local school or a local college uh, so i just applied for a fourth valley college and got selected there and uh, i was teaching uh, the students pastry and patisserie there uh, because when i was in glasgow that time i worked with the french chef called philip uh, in hilton under him for two and a half years just working in pastry kitchen so i had knowledge of pastry and patisserie so this is how i get into the education uh, thing there uh, but it was a very great experience it was got good eye opener uh, to see actually when you create I, i will call it a raw product when you create a raw product and you try to get them into the field and then you know what is a sustainable rate in there right. and who who those who are guys are interested how you train them and how you motivate keep motivating them you know so it was very different journey i will call it it was know? a new challenge for you totally new challenge Definitely, and yes. you did it yeah you did it see in that way well while research means doing uh, research on you uh, i i came across that you participated in master chef competition so can you focus on that because see master chef it means the name only it means a lot master chef so how did that happen and what efforts did it take to participate in that and please if you could share that moment with us chef over to you uh right so when i was working for a fourth valley college in sterling i realized i wanted to push myself you know uh, because when working for i worked there for one year and then within the six months i realized uh this is might be i don't wanted to do it for another 10 15 years you know i wanted to come out and i wanted to push myself because i always into the competitions and that kind of stuff uh so i came across uh, master chef and then i just applied it online and i was lucky enough to got selected i got a call from the production company which do all the uh, uh, videos for bbc and then they hand it over to bbc that production company uh, so there are the three steps to go through before you actually enter to the master chef uh, studio uh, so the first stage was you get a phone call just a general like interview from the ceo of the production company and then after that they will ask you to make a menu six course tasting menu and then they will tell you anything it might be the vegan vegetarian menu it might be a uh, gluten free anything they will tell you and you have to create it and then they will ask you the explanation why you wanted to serve it and why you wanted to serve it in particular way or particular style so that's what they ask you and then after that then you go enter to the master chef uh, kitchen and uh, there uh, the first round was obviously uh, uh, everybody know greg wallace and uh, marcus wearing so they will create and monica they create a basic skill test which is in their favorite or something very very basic they think chef should know this is how the concept works so six of the chefs uh, in the queue there for example and then every chef enter to that room exit from other side so they will not come back to that group because other five people don't know what you cooked so it is always a surprise when you go actually inside that room so when i went i had only one thing in my mind i because obviously when they cam- when they say camera and action you are not an actor so it's very difficult to handle that camera pressure you can handle the cooking pressure but camera pressure is very different you know when you go there and then you realize okay wait a minute they're going to say camera and action they're going to ask you to start and stop start and stop so you you have to keep your momentum going you have to keep your nerves going you know because nerves are very important when you go enter that kitchen so i thought myself you know what if i know the ingredients i can cook something so i just looked at the ingredients i know okay i'm can i can do this one you know uh, so they asked me to cook um, sauce maltese sauce maltese is basically a bechamel sauce with the grapefruit juice inside uh, with the poached egg and some asparagus so that time there was asparagus in the season so i cooked it fantastically so i was one of the chef uh, who done one of the best uh, basic skill test in the the whole master chef history that's what marcus wearing told me on that show uh, but it was absolutely great experience and the second second uh, round was your uh, signature dish so what you think close to your heart so i cooked the paneer dish because i thought i, I wanted to think out of the box and which is a vegetarian dish and then you know i know not most of the people or most of the chefs in across with my competition will not do it because vegetarian it's very tough one to get it on the plate right so i said i will do that one uh, but it didn't work well for me but 
overall experience was great but behind that when i was working for all these dishes so i was working in sterling so i used to stay after my work i used to stay there for 4 5 hours every day to just practice myself you know because the all the uh, videography and everything was going in london so i need to travel to london there and do the show but it was overall it was a great experience and then it shows you where you stand and then how to cope the camera pressure basically so it was it, see the hard work means an effort we used to hear that practice makes man perfect so here you are means live example so chef just wanted to ask were you only the indian who participated in that Or yes that time i was only indian chef wow proud moment for us proud moment for india very very good chef very good we move on to another one and it's related samely like that that scott uh, can you please explain me what is scott hot competition where you won the gold medal that's very proud moment for indians as well as scotland so what was that uh so i was working with the hilton glasgow that time and then uh, obviously i never saw any tv program much about the chefs thing you know i was into the books but i didn't see much tv program i used to follow the chefs i always like to work with the different chefs when i was working in india i always got upon opportunity to work with the italian chef singaporean chef turkish chef so i know their working styles i know their foods and flavors and plus my uh, our flavors from india because my mother is from gujarat and my that is from maharashtra so i always got the combination of that food in me uh and then when i came over i realized after a couple of years i wanted to get into the competition and one of my head chef told me there's a competition going on called scott hot which is only happens two in a year so every two years it happen in scc it's one of the biggest competition for scott scottish hospitality uh so i entered there there was 40 chefs participated in that particular group it's called lamb lamb meat category Uh, so i cooked uh, lamb rack and lamb brain lamb brain is very very unique to everybody uh, not many chefs know how to cook it because you can either ruin sorry the completely to, sorry to interrupt you chef i am hearing for the first time lamb brain i have been in hotel industry for long time enough and i have heard for the first first time really go ahead please yes so lamb brain is one of the very very unique cut of the meat and then cooking that you need a very skills because end of the day you have to know that cut is cooked or raw that's the first thing and getting the flavors right that's very important you know because either you can ruin the flavor or you can get it spot on and right so i done the dish with israeli couscous lamb rack and lamb brain with the smoked cherry tomato velouté i made it and it it's just went well because all the executive chefs all over scotland came in and they tasted it and they just wow Uh, and then i remember one thing that time i didn't know who was andrew fairly was but andrew fairly's head chef uh, andrew andrew fairly's chef the party and a sous chef was in that category so they are also participating so i beat them then i realized who the andrew fairly was you know but again saying that it was very proud moment not just because beating all these guys but showcasing what i like and what i come from or where i come from you know so very that's good. a very very proud moment for me no it's not only proud moment for you chef it's proud moment for us and for indians who stay in scotland and even for scottish people and hilton you are in hilton glasgow right the big one that time yes if i'm not wrong that's the biggest hotel of scotland uh, room wise yeah yes that's right how many room does it have uh, it's got 400 rooms wow big one big one for scotland that's yeah that's a big one yeah So, Chef, we move on to uh, another means uh, last question of round one. Like you know, what's happening in the world means everywhere we are talking about pandemic, Corona, and everyone is suffering. So, it has affected badly on two sector. Mo- means every every sector it has affected, but mostly on the two sectors that's travel and hospitality. We we all means whom we know and each other. we means wherever i talk they say oh we are struggling we are doing that we are but but positiveness is there that will come out and will come hard so what situations what analysis have you done and how the people of and the staff of helton glasgow are facing the problems and is there any redundancy going on in the hotel what's happening if you can tell me the situation about that and what impact has it done on hotel industry 
uh, obviously, uh, like to begin with, I would say in February, nobody will realize something is coming for us. Everybody was watching on the television saying, oh, China, something happening in Wuhan and everything. Nobody had a clue it's coming for us. Okay. But after March end, we realized it's coming for us. So we started thinking we are starting to closing down procedures and that kind of stuff. So we closed down uh, like every other hospitality sectors in UK closed down. So everything was closed down. Uh, after that, the question was when and how long it's going to go on? How long this lockdown is going to go on? Okay, everybody is asking question. Everybody is curious about it. Nobody knew because everything is new for the world. And then we have to, I mean, woke up in a different world every day because every day the news are coming. This is what happening in China. This is what happening in India. This is what happening in America. So it was a very different world. I would say it, it was an eye opener kind of stuff to understand what's important in the life. That's what I call it. And then something we have to step back and then we have to make sure we respect the nature. That's one of the important thing I have learned from that one. So it's, it's like respecting the nature and then at the same time helping the nature and working towards the nature rather than going against the nature. I think this is the result of the COVID. That's what I call it. And uh, again, the industry get damaged because obviously travel tourism, it's one of the biggest thing. You know, when the travel tra travel stops, everything else stops, especially the hospitality industry stopped there. Uh, so obviously when the lockdown was starting, then I, I was, I was trying to get into a little bit of my cooking skills. So I was learning a couple of things at home. I was doing loads of gardening and everything. No, I'm, so I have been follow I have been following you, uh, YouTube videos as well and Facebook videos as well. You, you were cooking too many different dishes and see the Marathi dish you cooked. That was very good. And you made so, such a beautiful, if I'm not wrong, it was a custard cake or something. I love that. It was very caramel good. Yeah. Yeah. Caramel custard. Caramel yeah, it was good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I made a couple of dishes at home, you know, uh, just obviously to get my hands along. And as I said, some of the dishes on day to day practice or when you work in a restaurant, the, your restaurant style is maybe not that. So you have to adopt your restaurant style and you're not cooking your original favorites or something. So I tried to cook that at the same time I was busy doing the gardening. So I was growing the potatoes, berries, onions, rosemary, thyme, oh coriander, that kind of stuff. I was growing for myself, uh, just for my kitchen, you know? And so that was, I was doing it can keep myself busy. But uh, when again, uh, three weeks ago, I back to the work and then again, everything was changed. It's like opening a pre-opening hotel, you know, you're going, yeah. entering into a pre-opening hotel, but again, norms are different you have less people because when you open a hotel, you always got people around you because they are trying to help you. But this is a different world. So you have less people, but you have same expectations. But at the same time, uh, the expectations are a little bit different because this is like more safe and clean environment you have to be in. You know, that's, that's the priority. Because if I'm a guest, if I'm entering to the hotel or restaurant, the first thing you wanted to see is the cleanliness and the safe environment. If you have that two things in the confidence, the guest will be happy. You know, the food, it play a part definitely. Play food and the guest satisfaction, that's another thing. But these are the two major things come along. And again, the redundancy is obviously, it's, it's happening all over the hospitality yeah. sector, not just affecting one sector, but it's a cycle, I will call it. It comes from travel, then it comes to the hotels, restaurants. It's, it's a chain, you know. None of the industry is going to kind of stay away from there, apart from, I would say, NHS or the government services. Front staff staff yeah, frontline staff. Yes. There, but yeah. I mean, They're in like, long term, yeah. it might affect them. But in the short term, obviously, it's affected these industries more. Yeah. So uh, are people scared? I shouldn't ask, but just asking just came across my mind. Yeah. Are people scared of getting redundant? And what are, are they talking about? Are they really scared telling about the people and these all? What do you find in, in the hotel sector just now? Uh, See, end of the day, uh, we, we have to get into the head very straightforward. This is not the normal world. We are now in the, we are going to wake up in a different world. So anybody's from CEO to working as a commie, he might get redundant. So, you know, right. right. nobody's job is safe at the moment. Nobody, absolutely nobody. So, you know, you have to woke up and then say, you know what I mean? I'm going to do my 110%. Doesn't matter what comes along. You know, if, if you got that, I think you can go along with. Very good. I like that passion, Seb. We have to do give our 110%, whatever comes in the way. Very good, Chef. Very good. So 
you have done pretty well and I, I i give everyone because i think i should give and really you have done very good you have you have accomplished 100 out of 100 in the section one chef very good so we move around to section two which is based on your travel so i wanted to know where have you traveled across means what is your favorite place what's your favorite destination where have you traveled so please tell me something about your travel part um when uh, my favorite place i would say brazil is my favorite place to go but i never been to brazil uh, but i've been to america I, i've been to america a couple of times i done east coast and the west coast i do on east coast more often but west coast i do only done it once so we done a road trip from los angeles to right up to uh, san francisco and i done a road trip in from new york to niagara falls and then down uh, down south a little bit in there is uh, atlanta city it's a casino city in uh, near for uh, new yorkers so i've been there uh, but again new york is very different it's absolutely different Ameri america is completely different you know america is absolutely different country on a different level uh, because of the population because of the geographical thing and then because of the time difference so if you go to new york and if you go to california you will feel you are not in the same country you are in a completely different zone because their time zones are different it's a four hours different so it's almost flying from london to new york and then new york to california is almost same time wow wow chef really good so uh, have you seen the nightlife of los angeles uh i been yes the nightlife of los angeles the first thing if you go to los uh, los angeles or las vegas las vegas i call it las vegas is more uh, what you call it's a man made city it's more like a dubai you know it's oh, a man made wow. city uh so in there you always first thing is you have there are so many shows going around you know all the hotels organize some kind of show either kind of circus or boxing show or a road some kind of shows always going around uh, again the hospitality is very big I, i would say that's the only sector survives in las las vegas oh and my las, god las so, so, uh, so las vegas has got uh, casinos so many casinos in it so yeah? many casinos so yeah have you been I to, mean, have you been there uh i've been to yes i've been to casinos and uh, <laughs> your wife said, the min better better see what you are saying your wife must be watching <laughs> watching <laughs> okay and yeah. uh, i mean the smallest hotel in uh, las vegas i would say between 1000 and 2000 rooms because they are huge oh my god it's huge they are huge yes huge. everything is huge in there because the americas the concept in america is like everything huge and big that that's what they believe in i think yeah yeah you're right my goodness sake so if you have to travel in scotland what what place which place would you go and where you have not been in scotland i have not been to i would like to go to shetlands i never been to shetlands oh, wow. i've been to isle of sky i've been oh. to right up the north but i never been to shetland alan i would love to go uh, uh, because uh, the first thing is uh, again the seafood is absolutely great uh, i love langoustines i love scallops i love mussels so oh, wow. always they are my favorites uh, so yeah go yeah, ahead so, sorry hello yeah so sorry. wanted to ask see like in uh, isle of sky you have been have you been to allen dune castle over there yes allen don yes we we been to the castle yeah because there was a shooting of kuch kuch hota hai was shooted over there that's right yeah see scotland <laughs> as right. a destination i call i want to tell everyone and tell people of or all my viewers who are watching scotland as a destination for bollywood it's upcoming uh, akshay kumar is recently today he has landed to scotland and he's doing a shooting of bell bottom he will be here for 24 days so that's a good news and the best part is that akshay has done that the chartered flight which he came from he ha he has given that flight to go empty from uh, glasgow to new delhi so this will be, will be the first flight which is flying from glasgow to new delhi otherwise it goes via france via holland via dubai so this is really good yes very good chef you have done again very very nice in this section as well so we move to the third round which is a rapid fire round you good to go yes okay chef the first rapid fire encounter question to chef rohan will be this wine or beer uh 
I would say none because I don't drink, uh, okay, but so still you, I will try wine. Okay, so you are a teetotaler, no worries, good. If you were stranded on an island with another person, who would it be? Be careful, your wife is watching. Wife is watching. <laughs> <laughs> I, would, uh, I would say any family member, very close family member, including obviously my son, my wife, or my brother, my mom and dad, anybody. You're playing a safe game, man. Good. Okay. Eggs, scrambled, fried, or poached? Uh, I would say fried egg. Right. If you have to be gluten-free or sugar-free, what will you be? Uh, sugar-free. What was the first food you cooked for your mother and what was her reaction on that? Um, I would not say cook the food first, but I would say I made a tea one day. I, I, was, I was not into the college that time. I, I made a tea. I was watching something and I always see my dad cook some, some of the time because my mom used to work and my dad used to work as well. But my mom had a beauty parlor. So when she used to come, before she come, my dad used to cook everything. And then I used to see him cooking the tea. And you don't believe this, but I'm going to tell you today. Yeah, please I didn't tell many chefs. I literally put 10 to 15 cloves. <laughs> <laughs> inside the tea and the tea was so spicy and then my dad was saying what do you put inside and I said I just put club because I saw you putting one and he said it's only one goes not ten <laughs> uncle very good very good okay so carbonara or hakka noodles hakka noodles very good what's your favorite ingredient uh, my favorite ingredient to cook or to yeah. add to, to cook. Just make a spice right uh, I would say curry leaf Curry is my very close to my heart, yeah. Oh, very good. On scale of 1 to 10, how good are you at keeping secrets? Uh, I would say I'm, I'm good at keeping secrets. I would say 8. 8, okay. If everyone in the world has to get married when they reach certain age, what would that age be? What do you think of the age when people wanted to get married? Means, what age as you think? Uh, I would say 30. 30. The last question of encounter rapid fire round is one dish that describes you the best and tell me why. Uh, I, I'm, I'm a person uh, who like to respect the nature. I would like to respect uh, the ingredients what I cook with, you know, because end of the day, you can buy any ingredients. You can buy, for example, you can buy a Wagyu beef, but if you don't know what to do with the Wagyu beef, it's a waste cut of meat. You know, you have to treat well. You know, that's what, that's what I always looked into, you know, and that's what I always told the youngsters, those who join, if you respect, you'll get everything, you know, you have to start respecting the ingredient. And if you understand, and it's just the harmony of ingredients when it comes together, and then you create a dish, you know, but you have to understand each and every ingredient before you make a dish. So if you understand that, the journey is simpler. Beautiful chef, beautiful. You have done really well in rapid fire round as well. And... First of all, I wanted to thank you for coming to my show and taking out the time. And the closing statement you want to give to the viewers who are watching, if you can please give the closing statement, Chef. Uh, closing statement will be, uh, I would say, uh, respect the nature. That's very important. Okay, be patient, obviously, because this pandemic, everybody's in at the moment. Everywhere is happening, okay? I know there are some lockdown rules are slowed down and there are people are saying, right, it's easy, ready to go outside for a night out or going somebody's house, gathering. But again, it's, it's us, it's our community is going to get affected. So we have to watch our steps. We have to make sure, uh, follow all the guidelines, what government has set for you. Uh, and again, wear a mask and then wash hands. I would say that, that that's, that's my closing statement for you. Very good closing statement, Chef. Uh, respect the nature, be patient, and follow the government guidelines. This was Chef Rohan from Clarkston. Thank you very much, Chef, on coming on my show. And for the viewers, we'll see you next Saturday. Who haven't subscribed my channel, please go and hit on the bell icon. Thank you very much, Chef. Thank you, Thank Rohan. you very much, Alok. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.